ערב טוב קהל נכבד וברוכים הבאים ליוג'ה וואנג. הלו, שלום. יוג'ה, זה יהיה יום ניינת קונצרט בסריאל, בתל אביב. האם אתם אוהבים את הוויזיט לישראל? מאוד מאוד. אני למדתי את הפרס, חבל על הזמן. It's uh, my first time here in Israel, and it's, I've never really stayed in one country for two weeks. So this is a, a great experience. Terrific. Unforgettable, yeah. <laughs> and I would like to ask you a bit about China. Okay. Because as we talked before, I, I really don't know anything about China. I mean, you know. uh, <laughs> is, is China proud of you? That's lots of people to ask. Uh, <laughs> Um, well, I left China when I was 14. I was born in Beijing, um, and I started playing, concertizing since uh, age seven. So, um, and uh, I haven't really been back there since I came out of, uh, I'm now living in New York. So, I don't know <laughs> if they're proud of me, but um, I'm certainly proud of them. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you, are you, uh, when you, when you travel, do you, do you feel that you represent China? Not really. I, I lived in New York for, uh, in the U.S. for almost 11 years. Mm -hmm. So I actually feel more American than Chinese now. Really? Yeah. Uh, you know, you don't, uh, of course, you don't have to be Viennese to play uh, v M Viennese music or from Hamburg to play Brahms or from Russia to play uh, Rachmaninoff. But do you, is there, is there something special about growing up in a culture and performing the art of that culture, or is, is that something that we, as artists, have to learn? Well, for me, it was really natural, because the first thing music I heard was the Swan Lake by Tchaikovsky and, um, and the Fantasia. So, so it's Western music, and I really don't like... Uh, the traditional Chinese music, the sound of it. And the Chinese opera is always take forever long, so I never liked it. Um, so it's really organic, I guess, for me to, uh, to kind of play the Western music. It's almost like a, a mother tongue language for me. And I'm sure for lots of Chinese people. Uh, or, I mean, I really never thought of it. It's like that's what music is for us. Uh -huh. yeah. Do you think that uh, Western music has, has an appeal for Chinese people? For, do, do you find that lots of young people uh, listen to Western music? Well, I guess everyone... I, I was interested in, in classical music, uh, symphonies, um, more symphony than piano music, actually, and leader. And I think, um, I mean, it sounds cliched, but it's, it's so universal, this music language. I really don't think uh, a Chinese person, uh, it's more difficult for a Chinese person to understand German music. I think it's, it's all human. Um, besides, I think the culture, uh, the, the essence of Chinese culture is the poetry, and that's, um, that's what, uh, what's in the Western music as well. So it's uh, really connected. Do, do, you, uh, do, you, do you think there's like going to be an avalanche of great Chinese artists like yourself and Lang Lang, for instance? It's been happening, I think, in the last 10 years already. <laughs> is, that, is that because there are good teachers? Is it because there are... Um... Well, I think there were good pianists before. It's just the doors wasn't opened up. The, there's no YouTube. There's no, um, you know, the globalization. So it's not... Um, people don't hear of them, but it doesn't mean they wasn't there, but now you hear more. From here you hear more of those talents coming up and they're really like, <laughs> like aliens, you know? <laughs> they just jump up, like playing all these rock trees when they're 11 years old, so. <laughs> yeah. are, and are there other, like, if I, if I, if I were to uh, visit in Beijing, could I, would I find, be able to find rock bands and, and jazz bars and things like that? So in other words, there's like a whole um, culture of, of music that I would be familiar with? Yeah, definitely. It's, uh, well, 
every time I go back to Beijing, it's so different. It changes a lot, um, and every time it's more westernized. Uh, I feel like so you you definitely hear well kind of 20 years back so you definitely hear Beatles <laughs> or Madonna in hotels and uh, yeah. <laughs> well, my kid my kids love Beatles. The uh, my daughter's about your age and and they they grew up on the I Beatles. I like Rihanna. <laughs> and what what music do you listen to if you wanna just kind of relax? Um, just I like Rihanna. I like Lady Gaga sometimes. Um, I listen to lots of like Monte Verdi uh, singing. That's really relaxing. Um, and I still have my love for symphonic music, like Brahms Symphony, Schumann Symphony, Mahler. Mahler is a little too complicated sometimes. <laughs> um, actually, make me more neurotic. Um, <laughs> so, um, and jazz. I love Keith Jarrett um, and Charlie Parker. So, yeah. <laughs> So you, you grew up in a musical family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my mom's a dancer, um, and my dad is a percussionist. And so that explains the Swan Lake, your mom being right, a dancer. Right, exactly. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so, from, so you heard at home classical music, and uh, that was the first trigger, I guess. In, uh, what, how old were you when you started playing? Um, I think five or six. I, I had a teacher when I was six. Uh -huh. Did people immediately, were you like um, very happily going to the piano or like me? I, I hated playing the piano. I liked it because I, I, I thought it was way more, well, I had, I could do dancing, piano and gymnastic and I hated the other two. So sitting there for the piano was like the easiest. So <laughs> back then I, I loved, um, yeah, I, it was an easy initiation. <laughs> mm -hmm. And. Um, when you were 14, you know, in your biography, it says that you were sent to Canada to learn English. That sounds, that, <laughs> that sounds, sounds kind of... Uh, sounds a little cruel. A, um, <laughs> a long way to go to learn English, that's fair. Yeah, well, that's, I learned it, so that's good. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, well, that's, they had a, it's a long story, we had a, a cultural exchange program between Calgary and Beijing. And, and China actually, and they had a summer festival. And the third year I decided to, more like my parents decided for me to stay there, um, just to experience and to learn English. Um, because they think that being independent is the most important thing as an artist. So, but, um, <laughs> but little do they know they really loved it. I really loved it, the freedom, you know, without parents. So, um, <laughs> So at 15, they thought I was gonna go back to China, but I went to Curtis instead, um, and just enjoyed it immensely. Uh -huh. Well, you, you were actually already um, uh, an accomplished soloist at the age of uh, 14, 15 when you went to Canada. Yeah, more, yeah. Uh -huh. And Gary Grafman was your teacher at mm -hmm. Curtis. Yeah. He was also Lang Lang's teacher. Mm -hmm. What is so special about a teacher that he can turn out um, so many great players? Well, all his students are Chinese, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, he, um, he's a great performer himself. Um, so for me, I learned lots of concerto under him, and he has all this great um, experience from a performer point of view instead of um, Unlike my teacher in China, which is more uh, a professor, like uh, more from the theory point of view. So, um, and he really develop, uh, all his students sounds really different. So he has a way of letting us develop on our own, um, kind of uh, like trying to find our own voice um, and our own character and our own personality instead of, uh, instead of him trying to tell us what to do. So that was, uh, that was really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How, um, do you think there's a basic difference between teaching music in China and teaching music in, in uh, for instance, in the United States? Um, it really depends on the individual, I think. Um, I don't find it too different. My teacher, I stayed with my teacher for from six until 14. And with Gary Goffman, I was with him for six years. So 
long times, and you really develop. It's kind of like each teacher have their own terminologies and um, their own way of thinking of music. So there's not much difference. Only real difference for me was uh, when I come to Curtis, there was lots more chamber music playing, ensemble training. Um, and we get ideas from conductors more than just one teacher and one student thing, so. Mm -hmm. um, you uh, were called on to substitute when some really terrific soloists were uh, sick. The first one, I think, was uh, Rado Lupo and yeah. then M Martha Ar Argrish, Argrish yeah. and uh, Mary Pariah also. Mm -hmm. What's it, what's it feel like to pick up the phone and say, and hear somebody say, uh, Yuja, are you busy next week? Can you play with the Boston Symphony? What's, <laughs> what's the feeling? Um, well, um, initially it was very exciting, and then I got used to it. I was like, oh yeah, sure. <laughs> 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 it's been like that for, um, since when I was, the Radulupa was when I was 17, and then Mata was 20. And just between the phone call and the concert just got shorter and shorter. The first time was like two weeks, and then a week, and then two days. <laughs> I replaced the uh, Bronfman and Kissin as well. And it's like I replaced all this, all my idols. I, I was um, kind of uh, hard to believe I, I do that, you know. It's, but at the same time, very happy. So. <laughs> And how, how big is your repertoire that you can fill? Do you have to fill in with the piece that they're playing? Yeah, uh, mostly. <laughs> but there's five concertos that everyone always wants to hear. So, <laughs> uh, Like Tchaikovsky 1, Prokofiev 3, Matas, um, Prokofiev 2, Bronfman was that. And, but I did have to learn a Mozart concerto C minor for Murray Pariah, and I learned it in, in a week. So that was, that was cool. <laughs> uh -huh. And where, where did you sub for Murray Pariah? I subbed for him uh, twice. One was the tour with uh, St. Martin in the Field, um, Mendelssohn Concerto, and Mozart C minor. And, and then I substituted him in Paris for a Paris recital. Mm -hmm. yeah. For a whole recital? Uh. For the whole recital. Oh, that I didn't play his repertoire. <laughs> I had no Bach or Beethoven, and I totally changed it, yeah. <laughs> Um, now, when you're in New York, I get you don't, must not have very much free time. You do a hundred. I have hours. lots of free time, just not in New York. <laughs> yeah, like this two weeks, I had lots of free time. <laughs> okay, a hundred yeah. concerts a year. One hundred twenty. One hundred twenty yeah. concerts. Mm. Do you have time to uh, learn new repertoire when you're when you're on the road? Uh, yeah, it really depends on. Um, um, which direction I want to take, yeah. So uh, sometimes, like, because I have so many concerts, I just do not want to hear music anymore. So I, uh, I kind of want to spend my time reading or just walking on a beach or something to kind of relax instead of learning a new repertoire. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. Well, Tel Aviv is a great place for, um, for walking on the beach. Yeah, that's for sure. I did that. <laughs> yeah. and when, uh, when, you're, when you're in the hotel in those, do you ever get kind of just kind of, um, gee, I wish I was home with my family or something like that? Or, or you, you're already out in the big world all by yourself? Well, it's been 11 years, so I'm used to that. But uh, it's, it's hard for me to know where home is, because last time I was in New York was uh, New Year's and I'm coming back, I'm going back there for two weeks in April with uh, New York Phil. So, uh, so it's hard, I actually feel like I lived in Israel, Israel for a while. <laughs> like, um, yeah, I'm kind of sad to leave tonight. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, you've been here for more than two weeks. It's quite yeah, a, it's quite a, a long time. Yeah, it's the first time for me. <laughs> I mean, you're in any country. That's really putting roots down for Israel. You know? Yeah, I, <laughs> I have my own routines now. You know, I don't know what to do tomorrow without Rachsri now. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good food. <laughs> okay. Do you think what? Do you, so, do you think that music is becoming like, um, like an international kind of um, market? It's just 
there's just no borders at all. I mean, you, I guess also Lang Lang is living in the United States. Is that correct? Who? Oh. Lang Lang. Lang Lang. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess. I, I guess it's the same thing. Just traveling around and, yeah. Mm -hmm. That seems, well, it seems kind of a bit like a lonely existence. Maybe, maybe not so. Do you have a boyfriend? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have some very nice sons, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I heard good things about Israeli boys, yes. <laughs> no, I mean, do you, do, you, do you have time at all for a social life? Yeah, definitely. Okay. I, well, I travel so much and it's recurring, so um, I have half the time in the U.S. and half the time in Europe, mainly. And so I do have um, friends everywhere. Mm -hmm. And then kind of, um, I think there's this second existence in the cyberspace. So that's actually um, keep half of my time too. <laughs> yeah. so. um, when are you coming back next time to Israel? October. October. Not, not, yeah, not far. Oh, you're, with, you're coming back with Zubin, I think, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and I'm doing three different concertos. And then um, the Pharmonic is on tour in the U.S. So we'll play in New York, LA, Las Vegas. Uh -huh. So the tour actually starts here in Tel Aviv. Yeah. <laughs> and then we go together to the States. That's yeah. great. Yeah. That's great. Well, I hope you come back for many, many visits. Me too. <laughs> uh, in, in case the audience doesn't know, every night you play another fantastic uh, encore. <laughs> And uh, the audience has just been going crazy for you. <laughs> it's, I think it's been a very, very successful visit here. Yeah, I loved it. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.